Many thanks for staying with us on the newsroom. These are the latest updates at this time. Justice James Amotasha of the Federal High Court in Abuja has notified and said a cyber ward and local government congress is purportedly conducted on February 7 by the All Progressives Congress, APC, in Kogi State. The congresses were for the purpose of nominating APC's governorship candidate for the November gubernatorial polls. The court void at the two congresses on the grounds that they were not conducted in compliance with the Electoral Act of 2022 and the Constitution of the APC. Delivering judgment, Justice Amatosha also barred the Independent National Electric Commission, INAC, from according rec recognition the unlawful delegates list that emanated from unlawful congresses for the party for the purpose of selecting its governorship by bearer. Ahead of the November 11 governorship election in Imo State, the People's Democratic Party has held the party's primary in its state secretariat along the Okigwe Road in Oweri, the Imo State's capital. Off-cycle governorship elections are expected to hold in Bayelsa, Kogi and Imo State on November 11, 2023. According to the state organizing secretary of the PDP, Lawrence Biado, the seven-man electoral panel constituted by the National Working Committee, headed by Kenneth Okon, is present to monitor the primary in Imo State. The PDP is expected to produce a candidate to challenge the re-election of Governor Hope Uzodima of the All Progressives Congress. And Vice President Yemi Osimbajo has presided over the Federal Executive Council FEC meeting in Abuja. Osimbajo is standing in for President Muhammad Buhari, who is currently away on an official visit to Saudi Arabia. Before the commencement of the meeting, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, formally notified the Council of the passing of Bola Ajibola, former Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation. The council then observed a minute silence in honor of Ajibola, who died on Sunday at 89. And Delhi has logged 980 fresh COVID-19 cases, the highest since August 2022, with a positivity rate of 25.98%. According to data shared by Delhi's government health department, two more COVID-19 deaths were also recorded. The fresh cases emerged out of the 3,772 tests conducted in the last 24 hours. And the House of Representatives at her committee has summoned the Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, and Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, over alleged loss of over $2.4 billion in revenue from illegal sale of 48 million barrels of crude oil in 2015. The panel is also proving all, all exports and sales from 2014 till date, where the invitees expected to provide details of remittances into the Federation account and come up with recommendations for legislative work and the whistleblower protection bill current before the lower legislative chamber. The lawmaker said the committee will exercise its statutory powers to compel the appearance of anyone who fails to honor the summon of the lawmakers. And Myanmar's military junta has confirmed a deadly airstrike on a village in the country's center where dozens were reported killed, prompting international condemnation. According to an activist group, at least 100 people, including women and children, were killed after Myanmar's military junta bombed Kambalu Township in the central region on Tuesday. And in sport, rival bidders for Manchester United have been invited to submit a third offer by the end of April. Several offers are understood to have been received in recent weeks, but Qatari banker Sheikh Dassim and British billionaire Jim Rothcliffe remain the front runners to buy United should the Glaziers give up control of the club they bought in 2005 for $980 million. United's unpopular owners announced in November they were conducting a strategic review for the sale of the club when option being considered. That's the latest from the newsroom. Thank you for watching. I am Mary Kanu.